So this is a nice question. Is it true that Bhagwan has said, you are in your natural state whether you make spiritual practice or not? And his answer is yes. So then the next question, typical mind question, then what is the point of making efforts to realize the self? Because he just said we're all in the self anyway. And then he makes a very interesting comment. Because I have a cough and I'm taking this medicine, pointing to the bottle by his side, likewise the absence of peace of mind prompts a man to undertake the quest for reality. So we go searching because inside us we feel we're not at peace, yeah? We're not happy, we're not at peace. We don't experience much love. I mean, that for me was very much my situation when I was in my mid-twenties, I think it was. <clears throat> and then he's asked, but if everybody's already a yani, a yani means somebody living in peace and love, where does the quest for yani arise forth into relevance? And then he answers, pulling back the clouds does not create the sky. But if you want to see the sky, the clouds must go. It is true that all are potential yarnies. Only a small number, however, manage to generate sufficient force of introvision of mind to result in its destruction. So this is our potential, yeah? And actually it's quite beautiful to be sitting here because we have a circle of people who have all a very strong potential and who've made a priority, have made a certain choice in their life. I can't judge your renunciation, but from wh what you tell me, you have some intention. So then a different kind of question. When I try to suppress thoughts, that is when they occur all the more forcibly. Bhagwan, who asked you to forcibly restrain thought? Gently coax the mind back into its source whenever you become aware that it is strayed. That is enough. Okay, so self-inquiry is doing that. That's exactly what self-inquiry does. 